drop to Jonathan oh. Taylor. Huge hole. He's at the 30. He's going to go. 10, 5, touchdown. Jonathan Taylor made a man miss the line of scrimmage and then runs it into Painter. The one-handed INT. Are you kidding me? Kenny Moore. What a play by Naheem Hines. What's going on, Colts Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Bring the Juice Colts podcast. Today, we're going to be breaking down all the different ways and discuss how the Colts are going to address the quarterback situation going into this offseason. So, now, originally, everyone said, oh, well, you know, if we bring back Rivers, because Rivers said he might want to come back, you know, we can at least have Rivers. It's a fallback. At least we know that somebody's there. He knows the system. He'll do good enough. We'll be at least comfortable to where we're at. Well, that plan has now changed. Philip Rivers is now not on the roster, stating he will retire from the NFL. So I never really got a chance to really get my thoughts on Philip Rivers. So I'll just do that now here for a moment. But congratulations to Philip Rivers. And uh, kudos to you for the way you handled it and the way that you came out about it. You decided, you know, doing it on your own terms. I, I applaud that. And I enjoy that part of it. And I know he does too. And, you know, a lot of people doubted you when you came into this team. Cody and I were one of the few that, you know, came out to your support. Said that we uh, thought that, you know, you can make us a better football team. And that is what you totally did. We wanted to say thank you for what you've done for this team, even if it was only for a year. It was good to have, you know, a future Hall of Fame quarterback on our our roster for sure. Thank you so much for everything you did, the way you handled it with class, the way you did everything for this team, even though in your short endeavor you did decide to end up going. It's been a pleasure, and thank you very much. All right, so now that Rivers is gone, We can talk about the quarterbacks that are now on the roster and where we think the Colts might go at this point. So the two quarterbacks that are currently active on the roster, they are Jacoby Brissett and Jacob Eason. Now, I think most people agree that Jacoby Brissett going down that road of being the starter, I don't think is exactly what the Colts think they need and what fans think they don't need. Okay, I'm not going to sit here and say that. And then we talk about Jacob Eason. And I'm just in favor, as everyone, of wanting to potentially give Eason a shot at some point. I think Eason could be that guy at some point later or another. But the Colts have already said it, folks. Eason's not ready yet. Ballard's already stated Eason's not ready. He's just not. So... They don't want to try to rush him into something when they don't believe he is ready to go. They want to try to give it another year, maybe two, and decide whether or not he's going to have potential reigns to the future on this team. So we most likely can conclude that sort of thing is out. So we can arguably say that the two quarterbacks that we currently have on the roster, the Colts are not confident in those guys going forward, leading this team to to success now and what they want in the future. Eason is the future, potentially. But right now, the answer? No, that's not what they want. They want to continue to try to assess him and try to make him progress to see where they can go for future endeavors. So now that leads to two options for the Colts. And that is draft a quarterback or we get one in free agency. Now let's talk about the draft here real quick because it's a little easier and quicker to dissect. I don't know where all of you stand. For me, there are only four quarterbacks that I know at this moment in time are better than Eason and can lead this team to what I think they can be in two or three years if that quarterback is the right one. There's only four. There's one or two that could maybe get myself more excited going forward, but still some question marks on them. And we're going to have to, we'll talk about them in a minute. So 
we obviously know Trevor Lawrence is going to go number one. I don't think the Jaguars are going to give up anything for that first rounder because, you know, they want their quarterback in the future. And so that leaves you with a few options. You have Justin Fields, Zach Wilson, and Trey Lance. Those are the three big names that everyone's been talking about outside of the first pick. Almost any other pick is up for grabs. It just depends on how much you're going to give and what you want to get. And I think most of us agree that if the Colts want at least Zach Wilson or Justin Fields or want a chance at either one of those two, they're going to have to jump into the top five, most likely. And may have to jump into the top 10 to get Trey Lance if indeed that's what it goes down to being, potentially. It's all going to be a matter of perspective on what do the other teams do. You know, with the Jets, do they get rid of Darnold and then get somebody else? You know, is there something this and something that? We just don't know. At least we don't know as of this moment. And then you talk about the two guys that a lot of people are questioning whether or not they can actually be the quarterback of the future or not. That is Mac Jones and Kyle Trask. I'm not saying that these guys can't be the future quarterback to success. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there's a lot more question marks on them going forward that we're going to have to get answers to in the next few months to gain a little more perspective on who they are and how good they really are and if they even even after all that, are they good enough to actually be the quarterback? I'm not sure. And that's why I really wouldn't want to try on them. Because, you know, we're already having a prospect in, in Jacob Eason. Why go with another potential prospect when you could get another guy here that you know at day one is going to be your number one guy and you can groom him along the way. Those are some of those guys. So we talked about the quarterbacks in the draft. Let's take a really quick alley down the other road. And that's free agency and trade. This is where I think the Colts should address the quarterback situation. This is where I think they should address it. Because there are a couple different options that appeal to me. The first big one that everyone has been talking about, Matt Stafford. Matt Stafford has been the big name for everyone, right? Matt Stafford makes a lot of sense. You know, Detroit's in a rebuild. You could give away a couple draft picks to get him. May not be the youngest quarterback on the market, but Matt Stafford is a proven quarterback with a lot of toughness and a lot of grit, a guy that can perform at a great level. He's a top 10 quarterback, no question about it, in the league. And just think of what he could do behind this team for the next five years, right? You know, he's about to be 30 years old. I mean, you know, he's not a young quarterback by any stretch of the imagination, but he's st certainly still got some years left in him if he stays protected. And that's what this team can provide him. He'll have a great offensive line. He'll never have had an offensive line anywhere close to what we would have if he came to Indianapolis. He would have a run game for the first time in what seems like forever. I don't think he's ever had a run game. Nothing even close to what Indianapolis has right now. The receivers, obviously, he's had Calvin Johnson and a couple other really good guys that you know kind of trounce what maybe we would be able to provide. But I think offensively, I think Matt Stafford could fit into that system with the receivers. And the tight ends, too. Tight ends have been really efficient for us as of recently, and I think Stafford could really use that. Then not to mention the defenses. Matt Stafford's never had a great defense. This defense is top 10. This defense is legit. This, te this team's got a really good defense. This would be easily the best defense Stafford has ever seen. Stafford would be in a great position for the next five years to really move and elevate this team going forward. I firmly believe that. 
I know a lot of people say, oh, well, you don't want to plan for just five years. You want to plan for 10, 15 years. I understand that, guys. I really do. But in this situation now where you know your team is a playoff team and you're there, you're just waiting for that quarterback that's going to elevate your team going forward. Matt Stafford can be the guy. Now let's go to another one that wouldn't involve a trade. And that would be Dak Prescott. You know, it was funny that a lot of people who... I, I recorded a video on this last offseason about the Colts wanting to go for Dak Prescott. And a lot of you really trounced on me. Even though I never said that I wanted Dak here, I just said... I thought it would be an option. And you all trounced me. You destroyed me. And now a lot of those same people that are here right now are saying Dak Prescott could be a legitimate option. And I'm sitting here saying it's an option still. You know, the contract would be something that we'd have to work out, right? I think would Dak Prescott potentially be okay with losing a few million per year if he knew the team he was coming into was well built for him and the team is at, and the and the GM and the owner and the head coach are wanting to build a team around him which I think is what they definitely can do in Indianapolis they've already built so much like Dallas from what Dak Prescott was a few years ago in Dallas with 2018-2019. You know, you have a great defense. Obviously, the Dallas de defense isn't great now. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that in the past, it, he's had some decent defenses to help back him up. He's got a great offensive line. He's had a pretty good offensive line for the majority of his career in Dallas. Has, has a good run game. He's used to that with Ezekiel Elliott back in uh, a couple years ago. And, you know, some young wide receivers that are learning to ascend in tight ends. I think it would just be, it would benefit him greatly. And I think, you know, it's hard to say that, you know, Dak Prescott is what he is in, at the Cowboys. So he's going to be the same thing here in Indianapolis. There would still be some issues, but you certainly can't tell me that Dak Prescott wouldn't be better than some of the other options we have currently. And, you know, Dak Prescott can learn. He's young. Isn't he, what, 26, 27 years old? He ain't that old. 27, 28 years old, he's still young. Still going to have many, many years. He gets protected by this offensive line. He could stay for 10 years, maybe. That's exactly what we want, right? That's still an option. You know, there's some other options in trade as well. You know, we talked a lot about the Deshaun Watson thing. Still 99% sure that does not go through to Indianapolis, but, you know, still an option. Just depends how much Indianapolis is going to give up, but they'd have to give up more than a lot of other teams. And I don't think that they'd be willing to give up that much for Deshaun Watson. Then there's guys like a Sam Darnold. You know, I mentioned Sam Darnold and how they would be able to take him from the Jets and the Jets could use that second pick to get a quarterback that they wanted, right? Maybe a new fresh start. And I think Darnold would benefit from that. Darnold, 26 years old. He's got good arm talent. Regardless of what you people want to say about him, the head coach failed him. Adam Gase failed him. And I, I don't want to hear anything more about it because Adam Gase failed him. That's why Sam Darnold has looked the way he has. I think coming to a brand new team, a better team, with a fresh start, New revitalization, new confidence to Sam Darnold that would make it much better for him if that were to be an option. Now, I would have entertained the opportunity of a Wentz, but the issue is now, you know, I don't know how Nick Sirianni going to Philadelphia changes things. Maybe it changes it to where he actually does want Wentz. Either way, that unless the Eagles took a chunk of that contract... Ain't no way that the Colts would go for him. No way. You know, I mentioned a lot in during the season and at the trade deadline that, you know, Haskins could be an option, but Haskins has signed a one-year deal with the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
So, you know, there's a couple different options there in free agency. I kind of gave you guys all the different options at a lot of different sectors as to how the Colts can approach this. They'll probably have some other things in mind. I'm not sure, but that's just kind of what I'm looking at right now and what I think would be the best opportunity for the Colts to land somebody that puts this team in the playoff contention and Super Bowl contention. That's what we're looking for right now, right? This offense and this defense, this team is ready to fight for a Super Bowl. It's there. We just need the quarterback. And I think that team is there and it's ready. We just need to find the right guy. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. Hope you all enjoyed. And as always, go Colts. Yeah.